Thanks be to God most high. Blessed be the ancient of days. Blessed be the most high God. Blessed be the king of heaven. And blessed be the son of Elohim, the son of man, who has come into this earth so that he may die for our sins and elevate us to the presence of the Father. Blessed is he and he is blessed. Amen be amen. Beloved, by God's grace, we are entering into his presence by the power of the Holy Spirit as we look into his word that he may instruct us. The Holy Spirit has come to guide us into all truth. And as disciples of Rav Yeshua, you and I should want to be led in the paths of righteousness and peace and joy. We want to walk in truth. And let's look now to our beloved master who is the truth. He is with us and he's speaking to us by his spirit. So open your Bibles, please open your minds. Allow God to teach and instruct us so that we could imitate our master. Discipleship is the art of imitation. And you and I are studying the scriptures because we want to be like King Messiah. So open with me and find the place where it is written in the book of John, the Holy Gospel of, of John, wonderful Talmud of King Messiah. We want to look at his gospel in John chapter 5, and we're going to read uh, some verses in that. John chapter 5, I'll read selected verses. But the passage under discussion is John chapter 5, verse 16 to 47. So you, I would like you to read that text so that you could have the context in which we are going to and fro in discussing our wonderful master. So I'm going to read verse chapter 5, verse 17. It says this, our master speaking, he said, but he answered them. He answered the villagers, Judean authorities, my father is working until now, and I myself am working. That's for his, for his mystical response to the Pharisees, some of whom would have challenged him concerning why he was healing on the Shabbat. Again, the Messiah was not saying that he is replacing the Shabbat with Sunday. He was not saying that um, the understanding of the stages are insignificant, and certainly he was not saying that, listen, if it's Shabbat, you, you should find reason not to do good. He was correcting religious authorities, just as he's doing today, correcting Judaism today, correcting Christianity today, and correcting Sabbatarians also today, so that we could all come into the unity of the faith in the bond of peace. So verse 19, he says this, Yeshua answered, saying to them, truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself. That's a good thing for us to remember. You and I can do nothing of ourselves unless it's something he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, these things the son also does in like manner. It's a wonderful way to imitate God. You see, God is like uh, 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 someone who's teaching us a trade and we are apprentice. We do not know. So we look to see what he's doing and we do likewise. So Yeshua saw his father healing this man on the Shabbat and he healed the man. It's wonderful when we and I can live our lives by only doing what we see our father doing. Let's see. The and then we drop down to verse 25. It says, truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming. That's, that's the future. And then he says, and now is, which means the future has already broken into the present. And now is, this, this is happening right now. God is breaking through in space and time right now. Even right now, not, this is a now is time. Now is when the dead will hear the voice of the son of Elohim and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, notice the Father has life in himself, all right? Even so, he gave the Son also to have life in himself. The Son relies on the Father for life. And you and I have life because we look to the living Father, and because the Son would have looked to the living Father, the Messiah said, those who eat of me will live because of me. So the father has life, the son has life, and whoever eats of him, whoever participates in who he is, whoever believes that he is the son of man, we too will have life. But our life would be a derived life until we come to that point when we share in the eternal life of the kingdom, Olam Haba. But right now, we have a down payment of that Olam Haba in us, the world to come, the power of an endless life. The spirit of him who raised Messiah from the dead dwells in us. And we have life and life more abundantly because not just the quality of life, but we begin to experience a dimension of life that we have never experienced before because now the Father through his Son has imparted life to us. And when you encounter him who is the resurrection and life, you enter into newness of life. Blessed is he. And then verse 27 says, and he gave him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. So here we see the Son of Man is raising the dead 
and the son of man is exercising judgment. But again, the son of man is only doing what he sees his father doing. So go with me to Matthew chapter 16, the book of Matthew. We want to look at account in the life of our blessed master. Matthew chapter 16. This is a question that each of us needs to answer. Matthew chapter 16, we're going to pick it up from verse 13. Now, when Yeshua came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples. Notice he was asking his disciples. He said, who do people say that the son of man is? He, he wants to find out. Give me a, a, an assessment here. All right. Who do people say the son of man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist and others, Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. That's answers. You have your o opinions. Wonderful, Brookesham. But he said to them, verse 15, but who do you say that I am? In other words, who do you say the son of man is? I hear what you say, people say, but as my Talmud, as my disciples, who do you say? Who do you say? And you and I should see that if we are disciples of Rav Yeshua, you and I should know who the son of man is. And we should say who the son of man is. And then this happened, verse 16. Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Yeshua said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And then he said, I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my congregation, not building a new church, separate from Judaism, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it or hold out against it. So again, the question is asked, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Who do you, my disciples, say that I am? Because who you say that I am is based on what you believe and what you think. So I am that I am. So whoever you say I am, that is who I'm going to be to you. Because you see, we know in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life is in the power of the tongue. So will you create your world by your words? Whoever you say that I am, that's who I am. Words create your world internally and externally. So it's important as disciples of the Messiah that we say who he says he is. Otherwise, we will be living in a refuge of lies. We will be living in a world of error and not in a world of truth. Blessed is he who gives truth. What worlds are you creating internally and externally? What worlds? Is it a world of truth? Or is it a world where the father of lies is Lord and he's just giving you lies and you're taking refuge in those lies? If you want truth, you will come to him who is the truth and he will set you free. So go with me to Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah 57, verse 19. This is so powerful that we get this, right? Isaiah 57, verse 19, in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 57, verse 19. We're going to look at uh, verse 19. And as we get into it, I want us to ponder the question, or not the question, the statement. I'm making this statement. And the statement is, he is the son of man. So it's a statement that I'm making to us. He is the son of man. So if you're looking for a title for this message, it is, he is the son of man. He is the son of man. He is the son of man. So we're looking at Isaiah 57 verse 19. Speaking about the Messiah, he says, creating the praise of the lips. Creating the praise of the lips. Peace, peace to him who is far off and to him who is near, says Adonai, and I will heal them. I will heal them. So notice God says, I create the praise of the lips. I create the fruit of the lips. So you and I should want to have God speak to us so that when we speak, we will be speaking his words. This is so important that the psalmist in, in, in Psalm 51 verse 5 says, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. When you and I open our mouth, it should be to the praise of the Father's glory in the precious merit of his Son. When you open your mouth, speech is such a wonderful gift that when you utter, it must be the utterances of God. Who do you say that I am? Let your words line up with scripture. Don't speak negatively about yourself or about other people. Have a positivity bias and speak words of faith, words of life. Who do you say? What are you saying about yourself? What are you saying about this one or that one? Is it in accordance with all of scripture? And if it's not, then we are bought into the lie of the enemy. Notice that, that, that P 
Peter got this revelation. All right, if you go back to, to John chapter, uh, uh, Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 16, you will see that Peter got this revelation. It says that Simon Peter answered. Simon Peter is Shimon Kiefer. Shimon means to hear, and, and, and Petros uh, uh, means rock. So what he's saying is that uh, Simon Peter, Shimon uh, 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 Kiefer, is, is saying, you become a rock when you listen to me. That, that, that's what his name means. And that, that's a lesson for Simon Peter comes from Shimon, which means Shema here, uh, and Petros, which means rock. So if you and I would be rock solid in our faith, we must obey the master. It's not enough to hear. You see, the word Shema means hear, listen, and obey. We speak to our children, and sometimes they don't obey us. They're hearing us, but they're not listening. And so we, they, they, we, they, they is, we are short-circuiting the process. We have to both hear, we have to listen intently, process what has been told us, and be obedient. Otherwise, we are hearers, but we are not doers. And that's why we said, blessed are you who can hear what the Spirit is saying. To hear means to obey. Blessed are you who can hear this message and who could obey it. Then you enter the blessing. Not just, okay, I heard this word, but there's no fruit. Then we are deceiving ourselves. The Father of lies has short-circuited the process. All right? So we want to look at, at this. You want your life to be rock solid, right? But I want you to go back to me to verse 16. Verse 16 says, Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And this brethren, I mean, this is wonderful to just know. And many, many of God's dear disciples know this verse, and some of us know about it. But there's some, something else that I want us to see in this verse by God's grace. How important it is to add or remove just one word from the scriptures. How important is that? Is it, does, does it matter? Well, if you go back to Deuteronomy 4, verse 2, Deuteronomy 4, verse 2, you see God says, don't add or don't take away. Right? Deuteronomy 4, verse 2. And if you go to Revelation 22, verse 18, we'll see, you know, blessings come upon you when you hear the words of God. You don't add or don't take away. So God is telling us something. Because, brethren, if you think back with me, back to the Garden of Eden, God says, Genesis 2.17, you shall surely die if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You shall surely die. That's truth. The father of life comes and says, you shall not surely die. You shall not surely die. So he adds one word, not. And it changes the whole meaning. And for since then, we have been believing the lie of the enemy. God says, you shall surely die. The enemy says, no, you shall not surely die. So he adds a word that lessens the force, that minimizes, that, that cushions it. You will not surely die. And somehow we believe that lie. We are invincible. I can do what I want and I will not surely die. But the word of scripture comes to us. Let God be true and every man a liar. You shall surely die. So every time you go to a funeral, it's the truth of God's word being witnessed. Man will continue to surely die. And we'll go to a funeral and we'll say, oh, that happened to that person, but not me. Why? Because we are believing a lie. Because we push far the day of our death. Because we don't want to confront our mortality. So I will not surely die. Not, this message that has come is not for me. Because I will not surely die. It's a lie. But brethren, I want to mention to us something again that is sovereign. Because you see, we need to be mindful of the words of Scripture. Go back with me to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will tell you now, in the Hebrew, and this is the danger of relying on Greek. Some people say, I, I, I am an English-only person. They just want to read the English and get meaning. And that's wonderful. Some say, I will search out the Greek. I'm a Greek-only person. But I say to you, our master warned us. He said, you need to check everything against the Hebrew. So he said, listen, not one yod or one thorn. That's a little tittle on the Hebrew word will be passed away. In other words, he's saying to us, check everything against the Hebrew. Check everything in the scripture against the Hebrew. If you have a word in English, you take it back in Greek, and then you take it back further to Hebrew. You drink from the fountain when you speak it from Hebrew. Down the road is the rivulet that comes from that fountain. And you will get some water, but it could be distorted. You've got to go back to the fountain head. 
Check it against the Hebrew. What is the Hebrew meaning? And if we would have done that, we would not have known or thought that Messiah came to fulfill the Torah. And fulfill in English means to, to uh, bring to an end our English mind. And we stay with that. But we don't go back. And we go back to Greek and say, okay, it means to complete. So Messiah came to complete. But we stop there. But if you go back to the Hebrew, we recognize he came to fill full with meaning. He came to interpret, correctly interpret. He came to uphold. That's the Hebrew. Now, once you have that, how can you say that you and I are no longer obligated because we're under grace? You have believed a lie. You've got to take it back into your Hebrew master and he will teach you. So what Peter got was this. Peter would have gotten this revelation, which is what he spoke. He said this. Atahu Hamashiach ben Elohim Hayim. Atahu Hamashiach ben Elohim Hayim. In English, it is translated, you are he, the Messiah, the son of the living God. Now, the word he is not in your English Bibles in Matthew 16. You just say, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. The word he is left out. And because he is left out, we have a diminished understanding of the text. But when we put it back in the Hebrew, that same Greek put back in Hebrew, it reads, you are he the Messiah, the son of the living God. And so, brethren, you're beginning to see, go back with me to Genesis chapter 3, and we get the revelation, and you see amazing thing what the Father was doing. So in Revela I'm sorry, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, we have this text. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He, he shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. Notice, he, 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 I'm saying that again and again, because what God is showing us is that he's given us a messianic revelation. It's the first messianic revelation. And so immediately, Hasatan may his name be blocked out, knows, okay, I've gotten this revelation because God is true. Someone who is coming, who is a he, and whoever that he is, he is coming to destroy my works. For this purpose, the Son of God has been manifested to destroy the works of the devil. So who is this he? Because whoever he is, when he comes, I'm in trouble. If you leave all that he, you miss out a great understanding. That's what it means, that the gates of hell will not prevail, will not hold out against. Because when you have this understanding, you're rock solid, and you're not putting that understanding on man, saying, okay, man is the, uh, 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 Peter is, uh, uh, is the first pope, and therefore, whatever the, 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 the church says, whatever they bind and lose, that's it. No. What God was saying is that you have gotten this revelation from heaven, and since you have gotten that revelation, I am speaking a word to you that when you build your life upon this revelation about what is correct, you will know what is forbidden, what is permitted, and you will not bind what I, you will not forbid what I permit or permit what I forbid. Because now you understand, is he has not entrusted it to a person. He has given the revelation of who he is. What I'm saying to us is that you need to know the Son of Man for yourself and know, have a rock solid life. What would I liken this man if you hear the words of the Master and you build your life upon this rock? Regardless of what cup comes whatever slight of doctrine comes you are rock solid because you know who he is all right so what i'm saying to us is go back with me now to uh, uh, uh genesis uh, uh so you just read it this he that is coming right now this revelation that peter got is really inspiring and you need to understand now where he got it from because remember the question was who do you say the son of man is now when you go back to scripture you get the book that reveals to you about the concept or the title Son of Man. And that book is the book of Daniel. So go with me to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. Oh my God. Blessed are you and you are blessed. Daniel chapter 7. In the book of Daniel, God is judged. God is judging you for how you would interpret this word. In chapter 7 verse 13, we have this. I kept looking in the night vision. I love that because God is saying to us, you got to keep looking. And this is not just speaking about night as in, 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 in darkness, but he wants you to say, I'm, I'm surrounded with mystery. And you have to keep looking and don't overthink the mystery. You have to embrace the mystery. Keep on looking. Keep on looking beyond darkness, beyond night. Keep on looking. Keep on looking. And keep on looking in the night vision. Embrace the mystery. All right? And behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like a son of man. 
was coming. And he came up to the ancient of days and was presented before him. He came into his presence. So we have this revelation from this about this mysterious being, son of man. Who is that? It's a mystery, but he's coming. All right? And Daniel is giving us a revelation. Go with me now to Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9 and pick it up in verse 25. Daniel 9 verse 25 says this. Daniel 9, 25. So you ought to know and discern that from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince. Messiah the Prince. All right? And drop down with me to verse 26. Then after 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing and the, uh, and the people of the Prince would come. So here we have in the book of Daniel, what? flow with me, you have the Son of Man and the Son of Man was going to be Messiah the Prince. King Messiah, the Messiah. So the son of man, Messiah, talking about the same person. But then Daniel did something else. Go with me to Daniel chapter, chapter, um, let's see, watch it. Daniel chapter 6, verse 26. Daniel chapter 6, verse 26. So here we have in, in Daniel chapter 7, one like the son of man. So this son is, uh, would be the Messiah. Are you following me? The son would be the Messiah. But then now in verse 26, we have this. I make a decree that in all the dominion of my kingdom, men, at the fear, tremble before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and enduring forever. And his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed and his dominion will be forever. So the living God will have a son who is the Messiah. Oh my God. He will be the son of the living God. So are you understanding what God did through Peter? He did what is called in rabbinic language, pearl stringing. He will gather pearls, as it were, one pearl here, one pearl here, one pearl here, and he string them together. Oh, my God. In such a way to form such a beautiful necklace that we could see the, the, the beauty of King Messiah. The Father would do things like that. So Peter would have known the scriptures, but to connect the dots like that came from above. You see, a man could receive nothing unless he receives it from above. And God sovereignly gave that revelation to Peter. You are he. You are he, spoken about in Genesis 3.15. You are he. You are the Messiah, spoken about in Daniel. You are the Son, spoken about in Daniel 7, of the living God, spoken about in Daniel 6. And God put all that together to give us this wonderful understanding. The spirit of wisdom and revelation has come. And you and I are beginning to know, who do you say the Son of Man is? Well, now you know, the Son of Man is the Son of the living God. He is the Messiah. He is Messiah the Prince. And the Messiah is a Jewish concept. No other religion comes up with that. All right? No other religion. You understand now you're in Jewish space. If you want to know who the Son of Man is, you have to say who he really is. Otherwise, you are not receiving him as the Son of Man. And so you begin to recognize, oh my God, I need to read the book of Daniel so I can know who the Son of Man is. Because that Son of Man will raise the dead. That Son of Man will, will, will judge me one day. That's why the book Daniel means mean that God is my judge. God is going to judge you and I, I right now how we treat with this information because we are encountering the Son of Man. And so, who is this he? Go back with me to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. So we have a revelation that Messiah is the he, right? But go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 32 and we want to look at verse 39. Just the first part. The Torah is God's powerful revelation and witness, open for all to see. We read in verse 39, it says this. See now that I am he, and there's no God beside me. Hmm, I am he. I, I am he. So God is revealing something that the he in Genesis 3.15, now is the he in Deuteronomy, in the Torah. And then drop across with me, if you will, to, to uh, Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. It's amazing when God could help you to connect the dots or to string the pearls together. This pearl of great price. Oh my God, that you sell everything and, and buy it for. All right? So, so Isaiah 4, 41, verse 4. Isaiah 41, verse 4. Who has performed and accomplished it, calling for the generation from the beginning. I, Adonai, I'm the first and I'm the last. I am he. Can I leave that verse with you? I am he. 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 I. I am he. The one who says, I am that I am, I am he. It's wonderful that you get that. Because when you get that in your mind, you become father-focused. 
Messiah-centered and animated by the Spirit because you have met with He. You have met with Him, as it were. All right? And so Yeshua is telling us something. I am He of Genesis 3.15. And God gave Peter a revelation that he was, would come rock solid. He said, upon this revelation, I will build my congregation. So if you are part of the community of God, and you think that the, he has done away with Israel, you haven't gotten that revelation from heaven. You've gotten a revelation from men, and you believe something else. It's a lie from the father of, of, of lies. He didn't, come to he didn't come to innovate. He came to restore. He came to rebuild. You get that concept in Daniel chapter 9. He would restore and rebuild. So if you're thinking they came to start something new, the Father of Light has added something to you that God doesn't intend for you to receive. So you must know who he is, right? So you must see Yeshua is, 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 is he. He is the fullness of the Tanakh. I want to give that word to you, Tanakh. T-A-N-A-K, Tanakh. It's what the, what the Hebrews call the scriptures. And the Tanakh is an acronym, as it were. The T stands for Torah. The N stands for Nevaim, and the K, Ketuvim, Tanakh, Torah, T. That speaks to the first five books of the Bible. Uh, uh, Nevaim speaks to the prophets, all the prophets, and Ketuvim speaks to the writings. You put it together, you have Tanakh, and Tanakh means straight. So God says, if you want to straighten out your life, you have to live by the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. And for us who have gotten the revelation of Messiah, it's from Genesis to Revelation. All right? So God is showing us that.